Thank you, Oliver Corbus. My name is uh, Fanny Lambert. I'm a fire instructor here in the state. Um, here representing myself and everybody else. Um, I believe this bill should be opposed on constitutional grounds, most of which have been outlined already. Um, it's interesting to note that in 1791, the United States government had only one regiment of infantry and one battery of artillery under its command. Everything else was well regulated military, so they assumed, um, state to state, they believed that was such a monopoly on the force that the Second Amendment was written to ensure that citizens' rights uh, to keep their arms would not be infringed. Um, on a practical level, um, I think there's a couple of reasons uh, why this bill should be opposed. Uh, I have a couple of different studies and reports here. Um, one of them is actually defining mass shootings. There's actually no standard definition for mass shootings. There are seven or so studies cited in this paper. This is a legal policy bulletin um, from the Cato Institute on, uh, on supposed high capacity magazines. Uh, this report's more interesting to me. My father was in law enforcement for 19 years. Uh, this is from Police One. This was a poll of 15,000 police officers taken in 2013 when the federal government was proposing uh, more or less reenacting the federal assault weapons ban. 95 respondents of uh, currently retired law enforcement said that banning magazines of more than 10 rounds would not produce a violent crime. That's 95% of respondents. Uh, move on to the next one. 70% of respondents say they have a favorable view or opinion of law enforcement that would not enforce banning magazines greater than 10%. That's 75% of law enforcement that responded. Uh, let's see here. When asked what they think the effect of an armed citizen intervening in mass shootings, 80% of law enforcement responded that casualties would likely have been reduced. Um, and finally, this is my tie-in because I'm not sure anyone knows how to do anything about this. Um, when asked what they think the single greatest contributor to <coughs> violence, gun violence in America was, 38%, uh, that is the largest minority in the report, in the poll, 38% the decline in, decline in parenting and family values was the single greatest reason um, that is uh, not an isolated opinion. Um, I was actually reading a Department of Justice study released in 1998, so it was dated, um, but it tied um, fatherlessness to the greatest single indicator of both victimization in violent crimes and, uh, and the commission of violent crimes. So uh, I'll try not to take too much of your time, but I'll take questions. Would you support or oppose the bill that says if you uh, uh, I don't think so. I think most of us believe, I mean, I believe it's a, a widely held belief that rehabilitation is possible, though not common, so. Uh, yes. Then, essentially, it's the individual who causes the crime <coughs> to be punished, not everyone else. Oh, so you're, you're asking whether that crime should be brought into every citizen because one person committed a crime. Yes, I agree with you on that. Thank you. Thank you for taking my question. You testified that you are a, you are a firearms, a fire firearm Yes, sir. Um, with your typical firearm, how long does it take you to change the magazine? You're asking my, my abilities or my questions? <laughs> Probable. Uh, in the dark, between two and a half and five seconds with no vision. So if I'm, if I'm completely distracted and I'm reloading, um, I can reload between two and a half and five seconds. Uh, two, and a half, two and a half and three and a half seconds, pardon me. Um, the average student at the beginning of the course struggles a little bit, but by the end of the course, they're usually in the three and a half second uh, as well. Follow up? Thank you. Thank you. Thank my question. So, in, in your opinion, in this, would this bill have any impact on someone having to class on to casualties? Yep, um, so that's actually covered in this report. It actually outlines um, various mass shootings where 10 round magazines were used and the rate of fire compared to those who had 30 round magazines. So I could take some time answering that, but I believe that it does not have a legitimate effect on somebody that can stuff 17, 20, 30 extra magazines in their pocket. A concealed citizen does not have that ability. Somebody looking to commit their mass murder has that ability. Any questions? Thank you, to the best of your knowledge, are there more crimes committed with handguns or long guns? 
Um, I believe the FBI statistics on that, and again, we're dealing with reported figures, right? So a lot of people involved in, in being mugged or whatever don't necessarily go to the police. Um, but reported statistics, I believe, um, something like 90% of gun crimes in America are committed with guns. Yes. Yep, the sponsors of this bill allowed more rounds and higher capacity magazines for handguns, which are responsible for 90% of the crime. So based on that, do you think that this would have any real impact? Um, ultimately, again, um, if, you, if somebody is premeditating this activity, um, my stepson trains with me occasionally, uh, he can reload with a firearm faster than I can, he can actually reload his firearm, his pistol, behind his magazine, hit the floor, to slide his lock into the shoot. It's very fast. Uh, I don't believe that this bill has any real um, objective merits to it. Uh, 